Hello, I'm Daniel, and welcome to the Moon Project. We here at the Moon Project are continuing in our series of videos with respect to information, education, inspiration, guidance, advice. And um, the biblical book of Leviticus. It's called Vayikra. Why is it called Vayikra? Well, the first Parsha, the first book of the book of Leviticus, is... Um, that first section, first Parsha, is called Vayikra. So, well, why is that Parsha called Vayikra? Well, because the first word of the book of Leviticus is Vayikra. He called. He, God, called to Moses. Vayikra el Moshe. And um, the previous two Parshas, uh, Vayechel and Pagude, Talk about the Mishkan and the building and the walls and the beams and all the stuff that has to go into it to the most minute detail. And now Leviticus starts with God now calling to Moses to enter the sanctuary, to enter the Mishkan. And um, Chazal, our sages, explain the juxtapositioning of these, these parshas, these, these, uh, these chapters and how they, uh, they happen. Once upon a time, there was a king. King uh, uh, commanded his servant to build a palace for him. The servant uh, went, hired all the people to do the, uh, the servant, and he had the palace constructed in a unique manner. Every brick every piece of wood, every piece of metal had engraved on it the name of the king. Everything, the entire plan, palace, the inside was filled. Every, every little thing had on it the name of the king. When the palace was completed, the king entered and was amazed that everywhere he went, Everywhere he gazed, he saw that his servant had engraved the king's name. And he said, my servant has honored me so much. How can I remain inside this palace when my dear servant remains outside? And he immediately summoned his servant. He called to his servant to enter the palace and visit with him. Likewise, when Hashem, when God commanded Moses to build the Mishkan, Moses supervised every little detail, everything as God commanded Moses. Everything that Moses supervised, everything he, he made sure, the walls, the beams, the Every little thing, every utensil was done according to God's commandment and Moses supervised this and made sure. And such was the devotion to this construction that God um, called to Moses with love and asked him to, uh, to enter the sanctuary. And um, when Moses supervised the building of the, of the tabernacle, the building of the Mishkan, not just the sacrifices, but the first several chapters of Vikra deal with sacrifices. It's not just the sacrifices that have to be perfect. Every aspect of the of the, uh, of the Mishkan had to be perfect. The pillars, the walls, the drapery, the beams, the stones, the altar, the laver, the everything had to be perfect. The ramp, everything. Every little item had God's name on it. By, by, by doing things exactly the way he was commanded, God's name was basically uh, on everything. And that when God saw that, that's when 
he uh, invited uh, Moses inside. He oversaw everything. Um, there was a, a man by the name of Rabbi Hia. Rabbi Hia, <clears throat> it is said, taught Torah in this way. First, he would he would plant flax seeds. When the flax grew, he would twist nets out of it to capture deer. He would shek the deer, he would slaughter the deer, and from its hide, um, he would make Torah scrolls. But the meat went to orphans. He um, prepared the scrolls, the parchment from the hides, and he himself personally wrote. He wrote out the five books of Moses to make um, a Sefer Torah, to make a Torah scroll. He would go to towns where there were no teachers, and he himself would teach Torah to the children. Did it all himself. It was Rav Aaron Cutler who questioned the need to go through this, to, to preparing everything, the, the, the parchment himself, the, 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 the planting the seeds, the, the, the nets, the killing the deer, the hides, the meat. He, he did everything himself. Why? He couldn't just go to a Jewish bookstore and buy a chumash and give it to the local. Why? Why did he have to go through the entire process? From planting the seeds right up to teaching the Torah himself to the children. It was uh, Ralph Kotler explains that the best guarantee of success is to do every single thing from start to finish, L'Shem Shemaim, in the name of heaven, for the sake of heaven. Only that which is done completely for the sake of heaven is free of any noxious effect from the forces of impurity. Everything is done for the proper reason, for the proper of intent. If one builds uh, a Torah edifice, a synagogue, uh, an institution, whatever, on foundations of holiness, in such a manner that every aspect of the construction is holy from the moment it comes into existence, the powerful forces of evil and impurity will never touch it. There's an important lesson here. When we do things scrupulously, L'shem Shemayim, for the sake of heaven, and we make sure that everything is done correctly, our efforts will be crowned with success and with God's approval and with his uh, Shekhinah, his presence, will reside with us. We're going to be doing more videos along these lines. Please come back, please watch, please learn, and until next time, on behalf of the Imuna Project, I'm Daniel, and thank you too much.